Matthew chapter 20, verse 29. I hit the account of the blind men as an account of itself. And as they went out of Jericho, which was a central city in the Old Testament, and it was raised, and there was a curse set upon it, and somebody rebuilt it, and as a result, they activated the curse, and two of their kids died. But Jericho is very much a catalyzing city in the Old Testament. It's one of those gateway type of things. So whenever we see Jericho mentioned, we're dealing with some massive thing that has to get dealt with. A barrier, or a threshold, or a gateway, or a dynamic in the spirit has to get dealt with. Something needs to cross a threshold. Because I guarantee you, there's going to be people who are guarding the threshold, telling you, no, you may not cross. Two blind men, in this case, were trying to step across a threshold. Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd rebuked them. That was demonic. Telling them to be silent. That was demonic. That was Python. Python, who guards the thresholds and tries to keep you from crossing from one season into another season. Their desire was they want to frickin' see. The crowd was like, be proper, it's Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on us! That voice is going to get his attention so they can cross over the threshold. This is not a time for propriety. Sometimes when we're dealing with the son of David, is not the time for propriety. Sometimes the only thing we have is our agonized spirit that's screaming, crying out to break something in the spirit. Son of David, have mercy on us. Shut up, the religious spirit says. Shut up, the spirit of Python says. You're not allowed to speak. This is not your time. You remain blind. It's the Son of God. You have to act with propriety, act decently and in order. Tell me you haven't heard that before. Plenty of times. This is no time for propriety. Have mercy. Eleo, I have mercy on. Then he comes forward and he helps them break that barrier, that threshold, cross over it into a new season of sight, which is a new season for them. Now, Pam, I have a question for you. How is it a new season for them? With sight, they'd be able to work and provide for their family instead of begging and relying on others. Mm -hmm. They could go around and navigate their world themselves rather than being led. The, the, the destiny of a sightless person was to have somebody in the morning walk them out to wherever they beg from to sit there by the wayside waiting for somebody to maybe give them uh, a piece of money or a piece of food. And because they were blind, if somebody handed them a piece of food, they would never know if they were going to bite into something that was whole or something that was rotten, unless, unless their nose told them, you know. But they, they went from a, a season of complete reliance to um, the possibility of, of independence. Which means there's a stewardship of the gift, which means you have to take care of the thing that you've been given. Matthew, gospel <laughs> desire, giver. Gifts, stewardship, resources, massive transition here. Everything gets shaken up. Not just, oh, he healed, but, oh, we're now responsible to work. My life has been flipped upside down. <coughs> but they were desperate for something because they needed their sight. Something in them knew. And they were not going to be held silent or unchecked by embarrassed family members.
they weren't willing to accept that which others have accepted. Oh, I'm blind, but that's my lot, I'm done. They weren't willing to accept their lot. They were willing to take the risk and get a change. The challenge here today is, have you accepted your lot? Have you accepted your lot? Now, I said I was going to provide yesterday time for y'all to do your illustrations of the cups, your writings on the cups. That is going to happen today. Okay? Now, the other dynamic here is now that we've discussed the cup and, okay, I'm supposed to take the suffering from yesterday, and there is a cup that I'm supposed to drink that has a certain season of suffering. Is there a cup of suffering that you are drinking that was not yours to take, and that Jesus did not give you, but somebody else gave you? There's not only the suffering that we're supposed to take, there's not only the, the trials and the tests that God has for us to go through so he can temper us, refine us, bring us to greater heights. There's also the stuff that the enemy has that he wants to hand you. So as you're receiving the cup, ask yourself the question, who's giving me the cup? There's a right season and a right variety of suffering, and there is a wrong variety of suffering. You're not here to help Jesus earn your salvation. You are here to complete everything that is lacking in you. Which means you sometimes go to the gym. There's training, there's testing, sure. However, there are certain flavors of suffering that are not yours to embrace in this season. And in this... Oh, Indigo Bunting is back. Oh, that's cool. It's right on the thing. Oh, wait, is that the thing? It, it just flew off. It was on the new one. Okay, got then, the first, the then I got saw it. It's right over there on the red bar. And our responsibility, gang, is to cross the threshold no matter what into the thing that Jesus has for us. And once we've crossed over the threshold, to take on the responsibilities that Jesus has for us as a result of the gifts that he gives us. If it's recovery of sight to the blind, that means, hey, I've got to work. I'm accountable now. Sight enables you to do so much, but it also means you're responsible for so much. So a gift can also be come bring with it a yoke and a weight. And your responsibility and my responsibility is to steward and shepherd those yokes effectively. So, I bless each of you to receive his design and purpose that comes with crossing over into a new season. I also bless you to distinguish between the cup that the Lord is handing to you and the mm -hmm. cup that the enemy is handing to you. Bless each of you with this understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.